shall have a look at the structural elucidation of abetic acid, uh, which is a terpenoid. Now, uh, abetic acid has got is a uh, resin, primary resin acid present in pine wood. Okay, and then it has got the molecular formula C20H30O2, and uh, from the molecular formula we can uh, uh, conclude that it has got four isoprene units, and uh, uh, hence it must be a diterpenoid. Okay, in the classification we have seen uh, how do we classify based on the iso number of isoprene units of terpenoids. So, abetic acid is a diterpenoid. Now, when we calculate the double bond equivalence of abetic acid uh, using the formula x plus 1 minus y by 2, where x stands for the number of carbon atoms and y stands for the number of hydrogen atoms, you get we get the double bond equivalence equal to 6. Now, that can imply that there may be there are 6 double bonds or there are uh, uh, three uh, rings present. Uh, there are different ways of uh, analyzing or uh, interpreting the double bond equivalence in different manners. We'll see that. Okay, we need to answer for the uh, double bond equivalence equal to six. Okay, that's one thing which we need to do while elucidating the structure. Now, uh, since abetic acid has oxygen in it, we shall go for the check for the nature of oxygen. And uh, it was found that abetic acid gives effervescence with sodium bicarbonate. That implies the uh, molecule will be having COOH group. Okay, so both the oxygen can be assigned to the carboxyl group. Now, if COOH group is present, we need to see what is the nature of that COOH group. So, when uh, the abetic acid was esterified, it was very difficult to esterify it. So, Probably the carboxyl group is a tertiary one. All right, and then uh, this uh, uh, when abetic acid was warmed with concentrated sulfuric acid, carbon monoxide was evolved. So the uh, presence of tertiary carboxyl group is confirmed. So the two oxygen can be assigned to the carboxyl group, and the two uh, and the carboxyl group is a. Uh, tertiary carboxyl group. So, we have accounted for one double bond equivalence. Okay, so that one double bond equivalence goes to the carboxyl group. Now, so that now we can rewrite the molecular formula of abetic acid as C19H29COOH. Now, we need to answer for the C19H29. Alright. Uh, when abetic acid was hydrogenated, it gave, gave tetrahydroabetic acid. That means two moles of hydrogen was used up. So from C19H29, we got C19H33. Four more atoms of hydrogen has been introduced or added up. So that implies abetic acid has got two double bonds. Alright, so that accounts for two more double bond equivalents. So, we altogether we have uh, accounted for three double bond equivalents out of the six. One goes for COOH and the two uh, other two goes for the two double bonds. Now, COOH is a substituent and hence the parent hydrocarbon of abetic acid will be C19H13. Now, this uh, uh, to this, we add four more hydrogen atoms because of hydrogenation to remove the double bond. So, you get as uh, C19H34. So, this is the parent alkane. C19H34 is the parent alkane. Hence, this corresponds to CNH2N-4, which is for tricyclic compound. Okay, we know that when the general alkane formula is CNH2N plus 2, it corresponds to acyclic saturated hydrocarbon. When it is CNH2N, it goes for monocyclic saturated hydrocarbon. When it is CNH2N minus 2, it goes for bicyclic saturated hydrocarbon. And when it is CNH2N minus 4, it goes for tricyclic saturated hydrocarbon. <coughs> when it is CNH2N minus 6, we go for it to be for tetracyclic saturated hydrocarbon that we have seen when we were, we had elucidated the structure of uh, uh, cholesterol and uh, steroids. Okay, so uh, abetic acid in this uh, terpenoid 
uh, abitic acid is a tricyclic compound. So it is a uh, tricyclic diterpenoid. Okay. So we have answered for the six double bond equivalents. One double bond equivalent corresponds to COOH. The other one, uh, two double bond equivalents corresponds to the two double bonds and the other last final three double bond equivalents correspond to the tricycle three rings. Okay, so that is uh, the uh, double bond equivalence, story of double bond equivalence of abetic acid. So abetic acid has got three rings, two double bonds and one COOH. Now on dehydrogenation with selenium or sulfur or palladium, abetic acid gave reti, which is a phenanthrin derivative with molecular formula C18H18. So retin has got C18H18. Now, when the uh, structure of retin was determined by oxidative degradation, uh, retin was oxidized, we got retin quinone, and the retin quinone on further oxidation by benzylic acid under benzylic acid rearrangement gave a compound 3, which on uh, another uh, set of oxidation gave compound 4, and then uh, on treatment with concentrated KOH gave compound 5. Now, compound 5 formed cyclic anhydride. That means that the, uh, there are two <coughs> carboxyl groups adjacent to each other in compound 5. And compound 4 does not form cyclic anhydride. So, in compound 4, the, the two COH are not adjacent to each other. So, one COH is ortho to the center ring. It was found that one COOH is ortho to the center ring. Now, this COH would have been derived from an alkyl group in Britain. And so, one allyl group must be present at position 1. Now, compound 3 is formed from compound 2 by the loss of one carbon atom. Okay, there is a loss of carbon atom when uh, compound 3 is formed from compound 2. So, the COOH is, must have been formed from the methyl group at position 1. And on heating compound 4, it gave fluorinone. And the fluorinone gave uh, biphenyl. Okay, sorry, compound 5 gave biphenyl. So, uh, we could establish the structure of 4 and 5. We will see in detail about this. See here, retin on oxidation gave retin quinone, that is compound 2, which on oxidation, it went, underwent benzylic acid rearrangement, it gave us compound 3. Now, this compound 3 is formed by the loss of uh, a carbon atom from compound 2. Okay, so that loss, the COH form must have been from the, this COH must have been formed from the, uh, this methyl group here. And uh, one carbon is lost. See here we had six ring, six membered ring. Now here we have only five membered ring. So that is one loss of carbon atom here. And on heating compound four, it gave fluorinone. And the compound five, uh, gave biphenyl. So, the structure of 4 and 5 must be this one. Okay. So, uh, when you heat, this is compound 5, right? Carboxyl group, compound. So, when you heat it, all the COOH will go and you get biphenyl. Alright. So, when you heat uh, compound 4, we get fluorinone. So, that must be the, uh, I mean, uh, so the basic structure this must be the structure of retin. So, this the structure of retin was established. Now, uh, the position of uh, the isopropyl group on retin was further confirmed by this particular reaction wherein uh, the this was fused with the KOH. Common 3 was the compound 3 which we caused, got in the previous reaction was fused with KOH and we, we got 4 isopropyl biphenyl which on oxidation gave biphenyl 4 carboxylic acid. So, formation of biphenyl 4 carboxylic acid indicates that there must be a, an alkyl group or isopropyl group on uh, carbon 4. 
okay and hence the uh, uh, the uh, isopropyl group on retin must be on carbon 7 so this is the carbon 4 is for the uh, carbon 4 of biphenyl carbon 7 is for the carbon 7 of uh, retin Alright, hence the position of isopropyl group in retin is further confirmed. It is on position carbon 7. Now, the structure of retin was further uh, confirmed by its synthesis, and that was done by Havath. Uh, to the Havath synthesis in 1932. Okay, retin was synthesized from naphthalene. It was uh, uh, subjected to Friedel Kraft alkylation with, by treatment with uh, CH3 twice, CHBr, and aluminum chloride, and the isopropyl group was introduced into the naphthalene. This was then uh, uh, subjected to Friedel Kraft acylation, wherein the acyl group was introduced to this, uh, this here of uh, naphthalene. And then this compound was subjected to esterification, so the carboxyl group was esterified. Then it was treated with the Grignard reagent, so the carbonyl group over here was trans converted to methyl group. See, you use methyl magnesium iodide, you get a methyl group over here. And then on further hydrolysis, the ester group is removed and you get back the carboxyl group. Okay, so all these three uh, treatments are done in order to get, introduce the methyl group over here. Okay, this was then uh, redu reduced using HI and phosphorus and the ring closure happens. Okay, and uh, after that this was uh, subject to Clemenson's reduction and followed by selenium dehydrogenation we got retin. So retin was uh, the uh, synthesis of retin was completed and uh, the position of the isopropyl group and methyl group on retin is like this. So this is the C18, H18 uh, group or the C18, H18 compound retin. Hence our uh, abetic acid must have this skeleton. So this, this is the uh, 18 carbon skeleton of abetic acid. Okay, it must have a methyl group on carbon 4 and a, a isopropyl group on carbon 13. So, this must be the skeleton for uh, abetic acid. So, we got abetic acid which has got molecular formula C19H29COH and in that we have the retin moiety C18H18. And uh, we get retin from a betic acid by selenium or sulfur dehydrogenation. Alright, now a betic acid has a carbon skeleton as that of retin, we can say that. And so the 18 carbon of a betic acid will be used for the formation of retin type nucleus. Now we need to answer for the uh, other two. So uh, a betic acid can be put as C20H, <coughs> H30O2 also. Okay, uh, so the uh, other two, that is one is from COOH, uh, other two carbons out of that, one is from COOH. So during uh, the dehydrogenation, COOH must have been lost, will, will, will be lost by decarboxylation. And one angular, uh, one methyl group must have been lost as methyl uh, MESH. <coughs> Okay, and uh, methyl thiol, and uh, that must be an angular methyl group. So, usually the angular methyl group is lost as MESH during uh, uh, dehydrogenation using sulfur. So, uh, we need to now answer for in order to confirm the structure of betic acid, we need to establish the position of the tertiary carboxyl group the position of the angular methyl group and the position of the two double bonds. So we need to now establish these three. So we have established for the, we have answered for the 18 carbons, so it is abetic acid is having a retin type nucleus with an isopropyl group and a methyl group. Now we need to answer for these, four, these three uh, groups, that is one a tertiary carboxyl group, position of angular methyl group and the position of the two double bonds. Now we will take up first the position of angular methyl group. How are you going to establish the position of angular methyl group? 
Now, abetic acid on oxidation with KMnO4 gives us two types of uh, tricarboxylic acid. Now, in these two tricarboxylic acid, one carboxyl group is from the COOH, which is already present in the abetic acid, while the other two carboxyl group must have been formed due to the oxidation of the double bond present in the other ring. So, basically, we can say that the uh, COOH in uh, abetic acid must be on ring A. Okay, and uh, the these two these two carboxyl group that uh, these two carboxyl group the uh, ring is, must be of uh, ring A, and the carboxyl group on abetic acid must be on ring A, and the double bond must of ring B and C. I mean the ring B and C must be unsaturated, and that's why it's on cleaving we got carboxyl groups. So, these are the uh, conclusions which we can get from this. Now, this compound on further oxidation gives us dicarboxyl group, okay, one carboxyl group is lost and that on further oxidation undergoes ring opening to give us 2-methylglutaric acid. So, it's after the rigorous oxidation that the last ring, that is ring A, is also opened up. Now, the, the first two uh, tricarboxylic acid which we call that on selenium dehydrogenation gives us uh, uh, two uh, compounds. One is uh, the 1,2,3-trimethylbenzene uh, benzene and uh, metaxylene. Okay, 1,2,3-trimethylbenzene and metaxylene. The formation of 1,2,3-trimethylbenzene and metaxylene indicates that the two methyl groups present in abetic acid must be meta to each other. Now this 1, 2, 3 trimethylbenzene is also called as a hemimelitine. So formation of hemimelitine and metaxylene indicates that the two methyl groups in abetic acid are meta to each other. So if that is to be needed, that is the two methyl groups on the uh, uh, ring A, must be meta to each other. So if that is to be that is to happen, then the methyl group, the angular methyl group must be on count 10 over here. Okay, so the angular methyl group is on carbon 10. Then only it will be meta to the methyl group which is present on carbon 4. Well, this we have already established that the position of this methyl group we have already established since it is part of the routine. Okay, so meta to carbon 4, we can have one over here on carbon 10. We can even have on carbon 2, but that will not happen. That if that is present, we will not get this tricarboxylic acid or uh, like this. So, uh, this must be on carbon 10. The angular methyl group must be on carbon 10. So, we have established the position of angular methyl group. Now, coming to the position of carboxyl group, this was established by Nusikia et al. Now, you have the abetic acid. This on uh, uh, esterification, you get, uh, or methylation, you get uh, the methylated abetic acid, which on reduction gives abetinol an alcohol. Now, abetinol on dehydration uh, loses one molecule of water to give methyl abetin. And the methyl abetin on sulfur distillation gave homoretin. Now look at the formula of homoretin. It is C19H20. Retin had the formula C18H18. So homoretin has got a CH2 extra from that of retin. Now homoretin on oxidation gives uh, phenantrine 17-dicarboxylic acid on oxidation with alkaline k 3 fecn 4 gives phenanthrene 1,7-dicarboxylic acid. The same dicarboxylic acid is obtained when we oxidize retin also. So both homoretin and retin gives us the same dicarboxylic acid or the same compound on oxidation. Hence, homoretin must have an ethyl group on carbon-1. Homoretin must have an ethyl group on carbon 1. Here we have a methyl in retin on carbon 1, we have a methyl group. And homoretin has got a CH2 group, a, a CH2 extra. 
So, and both are giving us the same dicarboxylic acid. So, the one carboxylic acid must be due to the isopropyl group. The other carboxylic acid must be due to the oxidation of the alkyl group on carbon 1. So homoretine must have an ethyl group on carbon 1 and hence the structure of homoretine must be like this. In retin it, was, it is one, so in, a CH2 extra is introduced for homoretine, C19, H20. Now that is one step, one, one point which we need to understand. Okay, now. We need to confirm the structure of homoretine and that was again confirmed by Havert. Uh, it was again started with naphthalene, the way we synthesized retin. The only difference is here, over here, in synthesis of retin we used MEMGI, methyl magnesium iodide. In homoret synthesis of homoretine we use ethyl magnesium iodide. It is, the rest of the steps are the same. And we see here, instead of earlier in retin synthesis, we uh, introduced a methyl group for this carbonyl group instead of this carbonyl. Here we have got ethyl group. That's the only difference. And we get homoretin, C18. Sorry, this must be C19H20, not C18H18. It must be C19H20. All right. So that is the structure of homoretin and it has been established. Now, get, uh, continuing, with the, how are we going to establish the COH, position of COH? Now, abetic acid, the earlier reaction which we had done, methylene, I mean methylation. So, this carboxyl group must have got methylated. The carboxyl group must be over here on carbon 1 here, uh, sorry, carbon 4. And then that on reduction gives us the abetinol, which is uh, the... Uh, the, we get the alcohol over here, the methylated group gets converted to alcohol and then abetinol on dehydration gives C20H30, that is methyl abetin and methyl abetin on sulfur distillation gives homoretin C19H20. So uh, this must be, so the position of carboxyl group must be over here on carbon 4 and that's, that's only when we get uh, the alcohol here and then that alcohol undergoes dehydration and there will be a rearrangement. The methyl group already present will be moving on and a, a sort of rear will be removed by well, sulfur distillation and you get the homoretin. So here Mag Wagner Mirwin rearrangement happens over here uh, during the dehydration. So methyl group is uh, uh, rearranged and it goes to this carbon. So that's homoretin. So we have established the position of methyl, uh, sorry, carboxyl group on carbon 4. Now coming to the position of double bonds. Now uh, the abetic acid formed an adduct with malic, malic acid at 100 degrees centigrade and hence the double bond must be conjugated. That implies that the double bond must be conjugated. And also, the UV visible spectrum of uh, abetic acid gave an absorption peak at 238 nanometer. Now, that is possible for, that is the, uh, that indicates that the double bond must be again conjugated. Now, here one point which, which we need to know is, if the double bonds are conjugated and we have ring, whether it is homoannular or heteroannular, we can establish now, the base value for heteroannular uh, double bond is 214 nanometer and for homoannular double bond is 253. Now, here we have the uh, lambda max value is 238 nanometer. So, the uh, base value must be 214 nanometer and hence the double bond must be heteroannular and the um, uh, bonds must be in ring B and ring C. Now that was for the confirmed by this particular reaction. Abetic acid on oxidation with k for gave other products. Along with that, we got isobutyric acid also. Now isobutyric acid, we would have got it from the uh, isopropyl group. So one double bond must be present in 
carbon ring C between carbon 12 and carbon 13 or carbon 13 and carbon 14 because of an isobutyl, uh, iso isopropyl group is present on carbon 13. And hence, if uh, uh, the double bond is present on carbon between carbon 12 and 13, it will be like this or if it is between 13 and 14, it will be like this. Now, if the double bond is between 12 and 13, we need conjugated double bond. The other double bond must be between 11 and 9 or 14 and 8. Now, that means that uh, it is homoannular. But we have proved that the abetic acid has got the double bonds are heteroannular. So, we can discard this one, the first one, that is the double bond. One double bond is between 12 and 13. Now, take the other one, double bond between 13 and 14. If that is there, for conjugation, the double bond can be on 11 and 12. No, that's not possible because this is heteroannular. Here we can have between 8 and 7. The double bond can be present between 8 and 7. So that will be form a heteroannular conjugated double bond. Hence, the abetic structure of abetic acid will be like this. So we have a methyl group on carbon 4, a carboxyl group on carbon 4, an angular methyl group on carbon 10, a conjugated double bond between carbon 13 and 14 and carbon 8 and 7 and an isopropyl group on carbon 13. So hence we have thus we have established the structure of abetic acid. Please do write the structures, write the reactions and practice and make yourself thorough. Thank you.